Okay, so Pisces. Pisces in the first house of the zodiac, or if you are in a Pisces ascendant or Pisces rising. So Pisces, um, they're the most emotional sign of the zodiac, very empathic. They can absorb energies around them, so that is... It's very important that they know how to protect themselves. They know how to um, draw boundaries as well because of that. They are like a sponge. They just absorb everything, especially when um, in their younger age, you know, they're very empathic and they just absorb everything. And sometimes they don't even know that, you know, the emotions that they're feeling, is it their own emotions or are they just picking up the emotions of other people because that is usually the case for uh, Pisces rising people. They are able to put in effort to make an effort in earning money. They can put their energy into something that they really really want especially if they're, it is emotionally triggered. Pisces rising usually functions in an emotional kind of way. So if there is something that they want on an emotional level, they can really push forward and do something about it to achieve um, whatever emotional goal they have placed in mind. They Their second house is in the sign of Aries. So they can actually use their energy fast. So it's easy for them to gain energy and it's easy for them to lose it all in the blink of an eye. So this can also be a sign that um, they might be focusing their energy into a certain area, um, which may or may not be very important, you know. They have a tendency to waste their time into something which maybe they think are important, but if you take in a more practical approach and things, it's actually a waste of time and very insignificant. Something that can be not lasting even, that kind of situation. But they can actually, you know, pursue things, make an effort on something, those kinds of stuff. They can actually pursue um, um, some form of work that can bring them in income as well they can make an effort to make things happen to earn a lot of money as well the thing with them though is that they can earn a lot of money and then they can waste it as well that will be especially true depending on their planetary alignments that is happening in their own chart so um yeah because there is an impulsive nature to them so um yeah they usually um suddenly earn a lot of money and suddenly lose a lot of money as well. I mean, it's, it's going to depend, basically. Um, it's not surprising that they have this um, attraction to the occult as well because of that 12th house in Aquarius. So something unconventional, they have that desire of seeking things that are occult-like, ethereal, astrology, divination, those kinds of things. Also, maybe because of their connection to Neptune. So they can be highly psychic, highly intuitive. They just know things out of the blue. You know, um, especially if they are able to control that empathic nature, which sometimes is hard to control when they are young but as they grow up as they grow old and with experience they can actually control this and you know that they, they can use this like a channel or as a medium to be able to get access to you know the other world the spirit world to gain gain access in making predictions because actually um, if you have strong Pisces in your chart you can be someone that can you know um, can be a legit type of a psychic reader or something like that or you can really have some form of connection to that um, divine nature to gain access of information in, in form of predictions or whatever that may be. 
I'm not really sure. I'm not, I'm not really uh, that kind of a spiritual medium or anything like that. But you get what I mean. <laughs> When it comes to their home life, they're actually um, very close with their family. Sometimes they need to have, they really need to be in touch with their family. They need to talk to them quite a lot. And many times they are quite close with their family. They talk a lot, they spend a lot of time together. And sometimes there are cases wherein they might need to separate from their home. Um, that is a possibility. Depending on their alignments, they have there is a chance that you know maybe they are far away from their home because um, Gemini in the fourth house and uh, rising sign in Pisces maybe they are from abroad or they are living in, in on another country and their family is in elsewhere and they just need to converse through the internet or something like that. That is a possibility as well. Also, this raises um, the possibility of having two homes or two family in place because Gemini is a, is a twin. So, um, yeah, yeah. Also, um, support from your family is very important to you all at the same time. With um, thir their third house is in Taurus, so this is a very um, fragile sign in the third house. So you will notice that a lot of Pisces rising people, um, they're not really willing to make an effort to connect with someone, even though that they might want to talk to someone. Maybe, you know, they, maybe they're missing someone. They want to converse to someone. Um, they want to reach out with their ex, reach out with someone in particular. You know, they're most of the time they are not going to initiate the contact. They are gonna wait for it. They're they're going to wait the, for the other person to talk to them. Usually, they are not going to be the the person that will initiate the contact, even though they are thinking about that person. Um, also, this is, you know, more on, more emphasis on their um, very sensitive and caring nature. So they can really care a lot to a lot of people. Um, they care a lot to the people they talk to, whether they're close to them or not. There is that Venusian type of energy in their third house. So also they might be taking care of their siblings as well. So um, Taurus is a very stable sign and when it comes to in communication, sometimes they might have a hard time expressing themselves. Maybe they cannot um, talk about it or explain it in a very practical manner because they are Pisces. Everything about them is not really rational. Um, even though I do believe that there is a rational side to them, they can think logically. Um, but in most cases, there are times wherein they can be so unreasonable, especially when um, when their eighth house is activated, which is Libra. So this is you know the area wherein crisis can happen in their life, crisis and transformation. When such thing happens, you know, this can make them very vulnerable. And because this is a sign of Libra, they will need the support of someone else. You know, they need someone to support them, to someone to help them. They really cannot handle this alone by themselves. They need someone to be there for them or else it's something that, you know, they cannot handle. They cannot handle the pressure. They cannot handle the negativity. Because let us all admit, they can be quite negative type of people. Seeing things that, seeing the worst case scenario in various things in their life. And, you know, their seventh house is Virgo. And this raises a lot of hesitations, a lot of doubts in their relationships. And sometimes they can... Uh, they can actually start to wonder and start to think if they are making the right choice in terms of their relationship. Um, 
Virgo is very detailed oriented. Sometimes they desire the perfect partner for them, but sometimes they can be quite um, critical when it comes to their partner, nitpicky or something like that. Or they can attract person that always needs some form of fixing. You know, they can attract people that needs help or some kind. They have that desire to fix that person, um, that kind of situation. So um, there are six houses in the sign of Leo. So um, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, they can really pursue... Um, they can pursue some form of work venture. Um, at the same time, you know, they there might be cases of um, finding love at work. There is a need for them to be in in a harmonious environment when it comes to their work life. That is really important to them, as well. Um, yeah. So initiating some form of work and probably. They are the type of people that wants to do things alone. They, they have this hesitancy to working with groups of people because maybe they think that, you know, it's faster if I do this all by myself. I don't need to rely to other people. Those kinds of things can happen, especially with their 11th house in Capricorn. So, um, yeah. They do have a few loyal friends though. Like I said earlier, they are not the type to initiate some form of contact and you know, if ever they meet new people, it is the other people that actually goes to them. The other people are the, the ones that actually seek them, that actually, you know, um, reaches out to them. That is how they develop the, the relationship factor. Also, they're not very a trusting person. They have a lot of doubts. So it's not easy for them to let people into their circle. They're not very... It's not easy for them to trust. It's not easy for them to let people into their life. They are a very private person despite all that. Also, um, you know, very rarely... They can develop some form of, um, I don't know, double personality, I guess. Very rarely that can happen, depending on their fourth house, whether that falls into Taurus or whether that falls into Gemini, that it can happen. So, um, yeah. Uh, what else have I missed out? Uh, let's see. Their fifth house is in the sign of Cancer. So... Um, they can be, be really dreamy when it comes to their love lives. Um, emotions are re really a, the biggest factor in terms of their love life. They can idealize things in, ter in terms of love. They can get disappointed as a result. But for them, you know, comfort, peace is very important as well. Also, they can be very passionate in terms of their love life that kind of situation um they can dream of that true love factor in their, their love lives that kind of situ situation they are very um for them having that emotional connection that strong emotional connection is going to be very important factor in terms of their love life and relationships basically so um yeah like I mentioned, they are very private people. So when it comes to their goals, dreams, and life, and belief system, um, they don't like sharing this to the whole world. They like it to keep. They like to keep things private. They don't want to share it to to the to the world or anything like that. Also, um, many times they want some form of change to happen in their lives so they have a desire to transform something in their life so it really depends on what they want to transform but with scorpio in that night house um, there is a desire to change something maybe they want to change something in their life you know maybe they want to change their attitude they want to change you know 
They want to change something to improve something to make things better. So that is essentially the goal here. So um yeah, again, they are very private per people, so they don't like it when people mess around with them, or people making fun of their 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 dreams and lives, those kinds of things, as well. Also, you know. They know a lot of stuff. Um, Scorpio is all about perception as well. So this really just heightens more of their um, psychic ability, very intuitive connection. And sometimes, um, yeah, very. this is very rarely that they see through things in rose-tinted glasses, but maybe they're just unable to say it upfront to a person because of that third house in Taurus so third house in Taurus is still ruled by Venus even though it's also ruled by the earth energy sometimes um, it's not easy for them to say things that are hard in facts they are going to soften that energy so it can sometimes make their words quite flowery all at the same time also um, they do have Sagittarius in their 10th house so essentially um, this is an area we're in they want to be out there there is some form of creativity in the way that they want people to see them also, um, yeah, this is, you know, all about knowledge, expansion, those kinds of things. So, again, I would like to tell you that the first house is how a person present themselves. Sometimes, um, this is how they act, how they function. And the tenth house is like the co-ascendant of a person. So, the vibration of the tenth house can actually um, be with a person's appearance as well so you know they can have that appearances or personality of Sagittarius in certain areas of their life as well so it may have to do with their um, I would say passion for knowledge passion to learn new things passion for um, Passion for the the unknown, I would say. This is also uh, an alignment that can um, bring a lot of good luck in them. You will see that they are quite fortunate people, you know. There are just things that happen in their life, you know. Um, they suddenly have a boost of good reputation for some reason. Um, in their career life, there is always something that can happen like you know an opportunity of good luck suddenly strikes them so you can see a lot of Pisces rising people who are quite rich capable in life financially stable financially wealthy those kinds of things because you know they are blessed with that Jupiter at the top of their chart so um yeah um Okay, so I have done everything that I can. So the only thing I have here right now is the um, celebrities for um, Pisces Rising Sign. So um, I had a few videos uploaded already for the Rising series. And the reason that I give out, I, I give out these celebrity samples is for you guys to know and see the difference that Pisces rising alone is not going to be helpful in telling the blueprint of a person's life. You would need to know that um, their son, if that, that will create an influence, their MC, their moon, and sometimes can create some form of influence. And the blending of it all, the, the blending of it, of the entire thing can actually define more of the person's uh, life and personality as a whole, even their appearances. For example, we have Michael Jackson, and I mentioned this in the Virgo Ascendant 
video that you know this can have a tendency to want to change their looks and then rem remember i did say that pisces rising people likes to transform things and change things so it is not surprising that you know how he wanted to change things is more on his looks with that sun in virgo so just take it in mind so we have also george Clooney, Whitney Houston. So with Whitney Houston, it's not very surprising. Uh, we have known her for her voice, also with her hair. She has sun in Leo and moon in Aries. So that voice and hair factor created, you know, a general makeup in her. Demi Moore is also. Uh, Pisces Racing with Sun in Scorpio, the eyes. Bruno Mars has this Pisces Racing as well. Also, I did forget to mention that Pisces Racing are quite likable people. You know, um, one cannot help but just fancy them and, you know, just want to hug them or, you know, there's just something about them that attracts people. Deepak Chopra is actually also a Pisces rising and I believe that his cardinal signs and sun and moon um, I believe they are near almost near the degrees of Scorpio like at the end degree of of Libra I kind of forgot but I did notice that there is a, a near degree to towards Scorpio. So, you know, spirituality and all that. Dr. Phil is actually also a Pisces rising with a nine degree in Virgo. And we all know Dr. Phil and how he criticizes people at times, those kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, this is my... Uh, my video on the Pisces racing. I hope you guys learn a bit of or two with this and yeah and I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did please do me a favor to like share and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and I'll see you next time maybe on my monthly forecast or on my next series. Thank you!